Hi, this is Mr. Woodbury from College of the Sequoias. This video is for my Math 21 intro stats class. We're in chapter nine and we're talking about how to find the appropriate sample size for estimating either a population proportion or a mean using StackCrunch. Before starting any project, the first thing you really need to determine is how large of a sample you're going to take. To identify a problem that is a sample size problem, look for a phrase such as how large of a sample is needed in order to do the following, or how many people must be included in order to do the following. That sort of phrasing is what we're looking for. Once you know it's a sample size problem, it could be for a proportion, it could be for a mean, and you've gotta be able to tell which is which. Most of the problems will tell you which parameter you're estimating, but there are some other things to look for as well. First, think about the question that you would ask to get the data. If you're expecting answers that are categorical, then you're probably working with a proportion. If you're expecting answers that are going to be numerical, then you're probably working with a mean. In addition to that, some information for the proportion problems, the acceptable margin of error, E, will often be given as a percent. When we're working with a mean, the margin of error is not a percent, and the standard deviation will be given. We need a standard deviation in order to estimate sample size for a mean, that will not be given for a proportion. When using StackCrunch to find the sample size to estimate a proportion, we first need the level of confidence that we desire. Second, we're gonna go looking for the margin of error, E. That's typically mentioned in terms of being within a certain amount of the population proportion. That's the margin of error. In StackCrunch, we need the width of the interval, which is two times the margin of error. One last thing, the margin of error in these problems will typically be a percent, but needs to be converted to a decimal in StackCrunch. Finally, the third thing that we need besides the level of confidence and the width is some kind of estimate of the population proportion. Now, if we're trying to estimate the population proportion, it's often unlikely that we have an estimate already to work from. But if we do, we enter that for the target proportion. If no estimate is available or given, then we'll use 0.5 in that spot. To do the calculations in StatCrunch, we'll use stat, proportion stats, one sample, and then look for the link that says width sample size. Let's try an example. I want to estimate the percentage of community college students who are female. How large of a sample must I take in order to be 95% confident that the sample proportion is within 5% of the true percentage if, and now we have two conditions to work with. First, I wanna point out why this is a sample size problem. It's asking us to find how large of a sample must I take. That's asking for sample size. What tells us proportion? We're estimating a percentage. We're talking about the sample proportion being within 5% of the population percentage. The margin of error within 5% is given as a percentage. Everything here screams proportion problem. For part A, we'll assume there's no estimate of the proportion. The confidence level is 0.95. The target proportion, since there is no estimate, that tells us to use 0.5 for the target proportion. The margin of error is 5% as a decimal that's 0 0.05, and the width is two times that. Two times 0 0.05 is 0 0.1. Okay, let's go to StatCrunch and compute the sample size. Okay, to find the sample size, we begin with stat, proportion stats, because we're working with a proportion, one sample, width, sample size. The confidence level was 0.95, the target proportion was 0.5, so we don't change either of those, the width we calculated to be 0.1, press compute, and there's our sample size, 385. It was 385, so that means we need to sample at least 385 community college students. In part B, it's the same exact idea, except we have an estimate. Last semester, there were 57% of the students that were female. We can use that for the target proportion. The confidence level is still 0.95. 
The target proportion is now 0.57. The margin of error is still 0.05, which makes the width 0.1. Let's go to stack crunch. Okay, now let's change the target proportion to 0.57 for this problem. The width will have to reset as 0.1. Press compute. There's the sample size 377. Okay, we found the sample size there is 377. So we need at least 377 community college students in our survey. Using StatCrunch to find the sample size when we're trying to estimate a mean. There are still three things that we need to know. Again, the desired level of confidence. Next, we need the width, and we begin by finding the margin of error again. This will tell us how, much, how close we want to be within mu. Then we double the margin of error to get the width. Finally, we need an estimate of the population standard deviation. So once we have those three things, we'll go to stat, Z stats, one sample, width sample size. Notice that unlike with confidence intervals, we'll go to Z stats, not T stats. Let's try an example. Example two, a researcher wants to estimate the mean height of 24 month old boys. How large of a sample must she take in order to be 90% sure that her sample mean is within 0.2 inches of the population mean if the standard deviation is 1.8 inches. Notice the phrasing, how large of a sample must she take? This is a sample size problem. What tells us we're working with the mean? She wants to estimate the mean height. She wants the sample mean to be within 0.2 inches of the population mean. We're given a standard deviation. And finally, the margin of error 0.2 is not a percentage. The confidence level here is 90%, so that's 0.9 or 0.90. The standard deviation is 1.8 inches. The margin of error is 0.2. Now, because this was not a percent, there's no need to move that decimal point at all. The width is 2 times 0.2 or 0.4. Now, let's go ahead and compute the sample size. To find the sample size, press STAT. Z stats, not T, Z. Press one sample, width, sample size. Confidence level was 90%, so we type 0.9 or 0.90. The standard deviation was 1.8. And the width we found to be 0.4. Press compute. And there's our sample size, 220. Okay, we found the sample size was 220. So we need a sample of at least 220 24-month-old boys. Here's the first practice problem for you. Take a moment, try to decide what type of problem this is, and then go ahead and compute the sample size. This was a sample size problem for a mean. The counselor is trying to estimate the mean SAT combined score. Here's what you should have for an answer. A sample of at least 509 high school students is required. Here's a second practice problem. An ambitious health researcher wants to determine the proportion of American teenagers that are overweight. The researcher wants to be within 1% of the actual proportion. How large of a sample is necessary to be 95% confident that the sample proportion is within the researcher's desired margin of error? This is a sample size problem. Is it for a mean or a proportion? It is for a proportion. They're trying to determine the proportion of American teenagers that are overweight. Okay, take a moment, try the problem, uh, pause the video, and when you restart the video, I'll show you the answer on the next screen. We would need a sample of at least 9,604 American teenagers. 